Welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast. I'm Steve Gibson. I'm Ben Matlock. I feel like my vocal pacing is weird right now. I uh, I said I was ready, and then, like, it's weird. Like, I don't get nervous about recording, but my throat, like, totally, like, double-clutched on me. <laughs> it's like a cartoony, yeah. like, you know, like... Yeah, it's not... It, like you said, it's not nerves, which... I think neither of us are self-aware enough to have nerves. It's not, it's, but it, it's, it's like you're pretty, yeah, pretty quick when quickly. like clearly you know who you are and you know what your show is. But it's more like your body just rebels when it knows you want to do something. It's like, fuck you, I'm yeah. not going to do that. Yeah, it's kind of like, all right, I'm ready. And then you're like, that gets to your back to your brain and like, we well, got to record an hour of this shit. Fuck. You know, it's kind of like how, like, I'm not a particularly gassy individual, but anytime you're in a situation where, like, it'd be terrible to have to fart right now, your body's like, oh, yeah? <laughs> like, I used to have go, that, I, I used to have that with nosebleeds. Like, I got <laughs> yeah. I got nosebleeds really I, bad when I was a kid. And up through it, I still get them today, but, like, not as frequently and not as bad, and I kind of know how to deal with them. But... Like, there have been times where I've been like, you know, the one thing that would really suck right now is if my nose just, ah, fuck. Yeah, like, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's never like light. It's like my brain's like, you want nosebleed? Here's all of it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's no fluid left around your brain. Mm. It's just all, yeah. Yeah, bodies are like that. It's like the second you think, like, what's the worst thing my body could do right now? Your body's like, let me show you. Yeah. At least that's how my experience has been over the last. Let me show you the years. things I can do. I'm gonna have things come out of two holes. It's like fucking awesome. You'll never, never even guess which two. Seems like a design flaw to me, but uh, I've <laughs> that never you didn't know your eyeball thing. could pop out a socket. But watch this. Anyway, anyway, so, yeah, here we are in top form. Top form, yeah. Physically fit, good to yeah, go. Definitely not that. Uh, <laughs> but you know I'm trying my best I worked out this morning and then I was talking later and I said something about like oh it feels good to be back in a workout routine I'm like well you really really cannot count one time <laughs> that's a, yeah. that, that all hinges I, on if you continue to do it yeah right. I, I, I mentioned last episode I got a new bike and I rode it on Saturday and like just did some laps around the block and it was a good you know get your heart rate up get break a sweat and stuff and then like i was just so fucking tired from that and like the next day is like people around me are like why are you why do you look so tired because <laughs> I'm, like, I'm fit yeah because I'm, I'm i'm an athlete getting strong <laughs> it, it's funny because you had said something on in the chat the discord chat about going for a bike ride and when you said that i was literally out in the garage dusting the cobwebs off my yeah. bike and i'm like well that's creepy yeah I'm, right, um, I'm riding over to ohio yeah i wouldn't make it no i can I, I make it like four laps around my house i do really i don't know i could say i do really good because that's a lie i do really mediocre until there's a hill mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like yep that that's i don't remember this being this hard when i was a kid okay, but i also well, wasn't yeah. this heavy when i was a kid so yeah i i kind of i don't know i <laughs> the, the i will say i'm at the i'm i'm rounding third of at the age of 32 i'm knocking <laughs> on the door of 33 and it's amazing kind of how the last year like I look in the mirror and I'm like something went wrong like <laughs> like yeah. it wasn't it wasn't supposed to be like this but but it is and uh in order for it to not be like that you got to give up certain things and I'm not willing to do that uh at least not yet so so crack open another beer with me and, uh, and settle in for another episode of the Non-Essential Podcast.
And I say I haven't had a drink in 25 days, I think. I've got a tracker on my phone, but I just don't remember where I'm at. It's like, oh, my body's like, yeah, health wise, that's great. My mind is like, my my brain's like, what the fuck are you doing? You've got booze all over the house. Just grab it. (laughs) It's like. I I actually don't drink that much alcohol. Like I usually only do it if I'm if I'm going out to eat. Like occasionally I'll have a beer with dinner or something, um, or like I bought some tonight yeah, that, because I'm on vacation for a week. So, well, yeah, there you go. That see, that's my thing. Is I'm I'm not like I'm never drinking alcohol again. Mine's like okay, I should probably, you know, I and again I can't say it never was or i'm sure i know there's been periods in my life where i was drinking more than i should have been but it wasn't like anytime recently but still i was like it can't be really that healthy and so i made the decision i'm like i'm just gonna not drink unless i'm like actually in like a social situation you go out to eat with people or something or you have people over and other people are drinking something like that so it's not like i swore off alcohol the thing is i'm a loser with no friends so i have not been in a social (laughs) situation with other adults for 25 days so there you go. It, mm-hmm. It's basically the same thing as swearing off alcohol when you don't go out. So there's that. Yeah. So you would think I might sound more lucid tonight. I'm not going to. I'm going to sound the opposite. It's my body's like that was the last fun thing you had, Steve. Why the fuck did you give it up? Um, anyway. If you've not listened to the show before, we ramble like this for a while, and then we tell each other random stories. Um, could be about anything, as long as it's creepy pastas. Uh, that's what I've got. Anything yeah. in the world. I and think I feel like thing. we're to the point. The next time one of us brings like a, a non creepy pasta topic, the other one's going to get like pissed should, off. Should be like, what the them. fuck are you doing? Um, although you had one not too long ago, I think. No, oh, my one before the two-parter yeah. Yeah. that I did. I know, which is like, <laughs> it's funny because we do every other week now, but you did the last two in a row because it was a two-parter. So I've had like a fucking month and I'm like, nope, I'm still not coming up with yeah. I, I, I respect it. Yeah. Coming up with I, we've talked sucks. about it, like, we talked about it every time, I feel like, but it's like the more time you have, the less likely it is I'm going to like use that time wisely. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent a panic last minute kind of like work person guy. Um, so anyway, yes, I've got a pasta that is a little creepy, um, this week. The interesting thing is it's when I came across and I was reading it and I'm like, I, I kind of like it. So that's going to be a, a starting off on a setting expectations high, mm-hmm. but it was also kind of like, it, this theme's kind of like, familiar but not from like a, we did this one before just like the feel of it and then i got to the end and you know how the creepypasta wiki is that we use like the author's names if they're on there at all are at like the end and i got down to the bottom and i saw the name of it. steve from steve <laughs> steve g dun 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 uh, Ohio steve. Now, the, the name seems familiar and i'm like i'm pretty sure we did a um story from this person so i clicked their name to look and i'm like Oh, yeah, we did this one. I think it was relatively recently. No, it was like five episodes <laughs> ago. <laughs> so it was very re- recent. Um, so anyway, the story I have this week is called The Bar by Alparos Lila. Al Pacino. Yep. Which I know I but- butchered that name last time, too. Uh, they're the ones they did uh, a story. I think I read a couple or two stories that week. Um, but the, sto- the story we read from them before is called Echoes from the Ashes. Uh, it was episode 257 back on April 23rd of this year. I did my homework when I looked it up. Um, this story is also a chapter story because I'm going to copy you. Uh, but not really. I just want to do this story for a split second there. It's three chapters. The total story I think I'll be done with in probably 15, 20. It's a short story. I don't know why they broke this up into chapters, although it's kind of, I can kind of stylistically see why, but three chapters, not long. Anyway, here's the bar. Chapter one, Lost in the Storm. The night was cold and the rain fell relentlessly, pelting the cobblestone streets of the small town. Shadows played in the corners of the empty alleys, dancing to the symphony of the storm. 
As the clock struck midnight, a sense of unease enveloped the town, amplified by the thick fog that crept through the narrow passages. Is the mayor like the fucking mayor on Nightmare Before Christmas? Has got like the fucking sad, panicky faces? <laughs> so, <laughs> just like, just like, the entire yeah, town's following his lead. I always think, when I see him, it all, always makes me think of... Oh, what was his name? Um, there was a there was a He Man character that had that like his faces were like in his chest, but they like rotated. And, like I think he was just called something. All those, none of those were like creatively named. I think his name was just like Multi Face or something, um, or Multi Man or something. Multi Multi Man. Yeah. Multi He. <laughs> um. Anyway. John stumbled through the dark, drenched streets. The rain obscured his vision, and the cold wind seeped into his bones. He couldn't remember how he got there, and a growing sense of dread gnawed at him. The town seemed foreign, and he couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching him from the shadows. As the thunder roared overhead, he caught a glimpse of a dimly lit bar sign. His coat was soaked, and he shivered as he tried to piece together his last memory. His hands were shaking, and a chill ran down his spine. Grasping for any semblance of familiarity, he pushed open the heavy wooden door, desperate for shelter from the storm. I'm trying to remember, do I like fucking impossible amounts of rain? <laughs> Which do I like better? Bars or rain? Yeah. My memory is fuzzy, I'm, so I'm probably drunk off my ass. I'm drenched, but maybe that's a good thing? <laughs> the room was dimly lit and the air smelled of stale beer and cigarettes he noticed a group of patrons scattered throughout the room each looking as lost and bewildered as he felt this is where the story grabbed me because we've talked about it before that's my kind of bar just dimly lit people just kind of randomly strewn about but not crowded but like not partying and being wild just looking bewildered or, and or drunk yeah. and or depressed yeah like, my ideal hangout spot is a bar where everybody looks very nervous yeah maybe like three total light bulbs in the whole place like because yeah. you don't want to see how gross and dirty the bar is you just want to know it like subconsciously but you don't need to see yeah and the bartender that. wiping the counter same spot on the counter all night well it's the only clean spot if he touches anywhere else his right gets dirty yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want that <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep this rag clean, but if I'm not wiping, nobody will know I'm the bartender, see? That's how you tell who's, who's slinging the suds. No one spoke, and the silence was only broken by the crackling fire in the hearth. John glanced at the bartender, a tall man with a sinister grin, and decided against engaging him in conversation, which would make it very hard to order a beer. Something about the man's demeanor didn't sit right with him. And again, isn't that kind of what you want, though? A bar, I don't need the like cheers. You walk in, the bartender's like, "Hey, welcome to the bar." That's that's awkward. Like, <sighs> I want you to look a little bit pissed that I'm there, but you still want my money. Everybody <laughs> knows your name, even though this is your first time coming in. Isn't yeah, that which great? Is a horror story in and of itself. Yeah. Although growing up in a small town with a dad that had a I don't want to say, like, he wasn't, like, a public figure, but he had a job that, you know, working directly with customers, local customers. That's kind of how my childhood was. Everybody. I couldn't fucking go. Yeah, I couldn't go anywhere. They're like, you're so-and-so's son, right? And it's like, yeah. And then they would break the a beer bottle you? and try to stab you with it. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's a profession that people don't always necessarily love. Yeah, but you're very memorable to them. <laughs> Looking around, John tried to find something familiar, anything that would help him understand why he was there. Probably because he walked through the door. As he scanned the room, he noticed that the other patrons seemed to be in the same state of confusion. Some stared blankly at their drinks, while others gazed at their trembling hands in utter disbelief. The eerie atmosphere was suffocating, and the feeling of despair began to settle in. This must be heaven. Well, see, here's the thing, too. I, I half joke about it. It is, they are kind of my favorite type of bar. Like, they're really just the divey, like. Yeah. Um, not like the biker bars, because I'd get my ass kicked there. I'm not a. <laughs> but, like, just well, the, the biker, bar, like, biker bars are, like, rowdy 
and shit. Right. Yeah. So we went to, but when I think of these and there's like, oh, but I looked around and everybody looked confused or they were shaking. That's what you see in a normal bar because they're alcoholics. Yeah. <laughs> I it's mean, like, <laughs> and they so, need that beer to cover the next fucking hour for them. Yeah. At this point, the character's like, it was eerie. And I'm like, this it's a bar. <laughs> like, it sounds like home. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, feeling the overwhelming need to escape, John stood up and made his way towards the door, leaving the unsettling scene behind. The rain still poured heavily outside, but the urge to leave the bar was stronger than his need for shelter. He stepped back into the storm, praying he would find answers somewhere in the darkness. The rain and wind battered him as he walked aimlessly through the streets, guided only by the occasional flash of lightning. As he wandered further into the desolate town, the storm's fury only intensified. John struggled to keep moving, his energy draining with each step. In a sudden flash of lightning, he saw a half-open door a few blocks away. Warm, inviting light spilled out from within, offering the promise of respite from the relentless storm. Driven by desperation, John picked up his pace and approached the door, hoping that his, this new location would offer him some clarity. He pushed the door open and stepped inside, greeted by the familiar smell of damp wood and alcohol. The bar was packed with people, all drenched from the storm. As he took a seat at the counter, the bartender looked at him with a friendly smile and offered him a towel to dry himself. John looked around, trying to make sense of his surroundings. He thought for a moment, trying to piece together his fragmented memories. Then, with a sense of unease creeping into his heart, he realized that he didn't remember how he ended up at this bar. And again, this is just like oh, describing bar, bar crawls. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, honestly, I have never actually done. We I, we started by joking about alcohol. I'm joking about how I like the bars full of alcoholics. I have not actually done a bar crawl. I am not uh, that heavy of a drinker. But this is what I'm picturing. It's like you just get from bar to bar, but then you get to the bar and you're like, wait a minute. How do I get here? I, I, Where? I always thought the idea of like a like a pub crawl like the world's end always sounded really fun to me but i never yeah. i like the only time i've ever been at anything where we were like hopping from bar to bar it was a friend's birthday um and i've probably told this story before but we eventually got to like a point where everybody wanted to go to like a club and i could not even like walk inside it was just like way too fucking loud. <laughs> yeah. Like it shot my anxiety through the fucking roof. And I like told my friends, like, I'm not going in there. Fuck. No, I can't. And they were kind of the same way. It was like, yeah, let's go back to that other bar. And it's like, <laughs> it's like you're describing, you know, a more trashy place. You just slide into a booth and yeah. you, you can hear yourself, which is very big for me. Uh, if I'm going to be socializing, and if it goes too far and you all pass out in the booth, you'll probably wake up with both kidneys. You'll still be in the booth, and they'll just be like yeah. some bartender, like, y'all better get it going now. I don't know why they'd speak in a southern accent. <laughs> I've been trying at, to but... keep the spot clean, but it's getting stronger. Yeah. <laughs> Usually you're pretty welcome at those places until somebody pukes or pisses on the floor, and then then they kind of want you to move on down the road uh, but uh, man, i'm guessing you boys better get to your next bar shit on their stuff that's a new theme though for for an establishment have you ever been to like one of those steakhouses where they like they just give you buckets of peanuts and it's just customary to like throw the shells on the floor and it's like ha ah, yeah. that's like oh there's a place like that or it used to be around here and shockingly they don't get buckets of peanuts out anymore they probably fucking got to stick <laughs> so like shells yeah, and I never did it because it, it seems be like there. I think that's a very weird. Yeah, you saw this. I never did because it's like, yeah. Well, by steakhouse, it's a chain place. It's not. It's basically the localish equivalent of Outback. So it's not like well, it's just a, like put it like just still Mex still Mexican restaurants shit, and just put out some tortilla chips. Yeah, like. Well, I'd rather have that than peanuts. So maybe that's not as common as I thought, but the, the all the ones around here, at least of that chain, it, it, that used to be the thing. And a lot of people would just throw them on the floor and it wasn't even like frowned upon. I didn't because it seems super fucking lazy because it's just well, as also easy to you like. Have a, you have a dish 
like exactly that you are you are free to put your fucking scrappings on yeah for easy disposal but uh so now i was picturing a bar that's like that where it's customary to not get out of the boot you just piss on the floor and like that's cool jack that's what we do here um call it like squeakies because when you walk on the floor you just get that like squeaky squeaking sticks squeaking sticks yeah like, well, like don't when you fucking... walk on tile and it's like your shoe like gets glued to it for a second it'd be, <laughs> it'd be a very good um motivator to not get so drunk that you're stumbling around <laughs> <laughs> I, I anyway. did have a friend who like he did not take care of his bathroom. He, he basically, his room and, like, he basically got domain of his parents' basement when we were in high school. And the natural color of, like, the toilet and stuff, not a great color, but it was the natural color was supposed to be, like, coral or something. Um, and the entire time I knew that dude... That bathroom was maybe that color once. <laughs> Most times it was like fucking black and fucking horrifying. It looked yeah. like the fucking mold in Resident Evil 7. And I remember same friend's birthday that we did the bar hop and um, he was hanging out with us and he drank an irresponsible amount of booze and we were fucking teenage just failures um and we and if we're telling you that's too much booze don't drink that like that's you know that's coming from people who've crossed the line um, <laughs> and he right. just laughed at us and blew it off and sure as shit he was like face down in the fucking mold in that bathroom like not too long i think it was maybe in like two hours does he have extra limbs now or uh, you know, he has never quite been the same. I will say that. <laughs> well, uh, he's Venom. He, he got, secretly he got, has a yeah. He got really unhinged, and yeah. I, if you told yeah. me there was a fucking symbiote controlling him, like he got fucking wild. Uh, if you told me a symbiote was controlling him after that, I would believe you. <laughs> it happens. Anyway, chapter two. Pour another round and another. The warmth of the bar provided a false sense of comfort, and John tried to collect his thoughts. Despite the striking resemblance to the previous bar, the atmosphere here seemed more inviting. The patrons were chatting with one another, but their conversations were laced with apprehension and uncertainty. So basically, it's like, man, a lot of rain out there. Or is it? I like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how you... Adding... I don't, <laughs> unnecessary <yeah>. suspense <laughs> <laughs> that's how yeah. i pictured like lacing a conversation and that's otherwise normal with uncertainty <laughs> you just add or is it to the end of every state <laughs> yeah. nice night isn't it or so i'm told bartender i'd like another beer or would i <laughs> it's like i don't know dude <laughs> <laughs> which again that's a that's a pretty good like twilight zone premise to me because i think that would drive me like insane why is everybody <laughs> why, yeah why is everybody asking cool. me their sentences uh, the bartender handed john a drink his eyes filled with an unnerving mix of curiosity and unease there's a lot of unease in this story John hesitated, sensing that something was amiss. As he clutched the cold glass, he couldn't help but notice the distant look in the eyes of the other patrons. Summoning the courage to confront the bartender, and I like the choice of the word confront, so just like ask him, because that makes it sound like <laughs> you're like you're starting a fight. Um, John searched for answers. Excuse me, he said hesitantly. I don't remember how he ended up here. Can you help me? Why the fuck would the bartender know how you got there? And like, yeah. <laughs> I was behind the bar. You walked through the door, Bob. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking stork picked you up and carried you to me. Have a beer. <laughs> the bartender's smile disappeared momentarily, replaced by a melancholic expression. You're not the only one, friend, he replied in a somber tone. People have been wandering into this place all night. 
which again is fairly usual <laughs> for a bar. Like, I don't know. Like, how do people normally enter a bar? Um, a chill ran down John's spine as the bartender's words sank in. The sensation of being trapped in an endless nightmare threatened to overwhelm him. He glanced around the room, watching the other patrons trying to maintain their composure, their eyes betraying their fear. Desperate to escape the cycle, John demanded answers. How can I get out of here? There must be a way to break this loop. The bartender sighed heavily, his gaze focused on the polished counter. Because, again, he's focused on one specific <laughs> spot. It's very fucking shiny by now. <laughs> That's the distant look as everybody's like, blinded by this, yeah, this countertop. It's like this ultimate <laughs> narcissism of just polishing this until I can see myself in it. Exactly. I wish I knew, friends. I've been stuck in this place for as long as I can remember. There seems to be no escape from this torment. Which, in fairness, is also how it feels to just have any job. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, of all, I I won't deny it's a torment, but of all like the hellish torments you could be trapped in the Twilight Zone, fucking shit. It's like, well, at least it's kind of chill, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, the first bar seemed a little problematic. Like, you don't want to be trapped in eternity with a bartender that's like snarling weirdly at you. Yeah. But this one is that nice balance where he's still not, like, overly friendly, but he's not... Just a dude. Antag yeah. Yeah, just a dude. Although I do, like... I think I'm going to answer that the next time, like, somebody is at my business and asks, like, oh, which way is the exit? I'll be like, I wish I knew, friend. Wish I knew, friend. <laughs> I've been trapped here for as long as I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> It's especially funny when the build you know the building I work in is like four rooms. Like it's the most easy building to get out of. But I get asked, wish I knew, friend. Like I'm really bad about like when strangers ask me for directions. Like because I don't know streets or. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I don't, I couldn't tell you which way is north. Um, you know it's like I I know where I've said it before I know where places are in relation to where they are to where the nearest taco bell is you know <laughs> but that's a very valid way to wait and it's so, yeah it's just how i navigate it's always by like fast food or something um those are my landmarks those are america's landmarks um, right that's why they that's have our, such big signs the taco bell is my north star i just follow it um which is weird because it's a south of the border restaurant, but it's your north start. Then maybe that's why you're so fucked up on your cardinal direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, as I wish I could just tell people like, "Oh, that building! I've been looking for it myself." Fuck. <laughs> wish I knew, friend. You I gotta started start trying to get to the fucking Department of Licensing when I was seventeen years old. <laughs> I'm the same way, though. Like, I don't know street names for shit, but I know my way around the, the city really well, and I'm okay with my, like, cardinal directions, usually. Um, I'm not, like, a human, like, compass, but I generally kind of know what directions I'm heading. Mm -hmm. But, like you said, that, that makes for great, like, I can get around pretty well. If somebody's like, how do you get here? It's like, ah. Uh. Uh, <laughs> you go towards it until you're there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Just you know, um, pack a bindle and believe in yourself. But the older I get, the more I'm realizing nobody fucking knows road names. Because even the few times that you do know road names and you say them, you just get blank stares back. Like, they're yeah. like, I don't know what that road is. I'm like, well, then how the fuck am I supposed to convey this information to you? Yeah. Like, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, as a, I, uh. I always respected the it's that a way, and you just point, <laughs> yeah. like like kind of like yeah. you're uh, pretending to be like a Native American chief, like <laughs> you're like don't say anything else, just stare off into the distance. What I do though first is internally think which direction am I going? Point the opposite direction. So when they realize you gave them bullshit directions, yeah. you're you're not near each other. Mm -hmm. I, what I do is I, I'm like, come with me. And, <laughs> then and you then just I, go home. Yeah, and then I, do, and then I just take them to, like, like you, a, you know, you, the wrong places. You get to your front door, and you turn around and scream, why are you following me? I'm like, calling the cops. I was like, well, this is the end of my of our journey. Be well, friend. 
I hope you find what you're looking for. And then I shut the door on them. (laughs) You know, that's, that'd be pretty great too, to just to do the like, Oh, I'm heading that way. Anyway, follow me. And like walk for a little while and then go to the nearest police department and walk inside back. This guy's been following me for blocks. (laughs) Get this fucking crazy man away from me. (laughs) And just when he tries to explain it, just deny everything categorically. I did not say I would do what? Get away from me. I've never talked to you in my life. You just keep staring at me. It's uncomfortable. Anyway. (laughs) <laughs> the night wore on and the bar's atmosphere grew increasingly oppressive each patron began to question their sanity as the nightmare showed no signs of abating although how weird would that be is like everybody is like ends up in this purgatory that they don't know how they're and then it just suddenly abates and everybody's like oh right <laughs> this yeah. is a flanagan <laughs> it's on fourth <laughs> <laughs> i'm going home <laughs> like, <laughs> this is just a story of a methane era of a gas leak <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fire department clears the air and everybody's like, ah, oh, okay, nightmare over. With each passing hour, the hope, their hope began to fade, replaced by an unrelenting sense of despair. As the clock struck midnight once again, the storm outside seemed to intensify and the fog thickened, obscuring the town beyond recognition. Maybe it's just like my fucking depressing ass, but being like in a cozy bar during a storm sounds great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I do get the, um, like we can joke about that. If you were somewhere that you honestly like, you you, it, like it's almost like having the dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever, where you, you realize you're like, I don't know where I'm at or how I got here. Like, honestly, you could be like, oh, that's a cozy, but yeah, that would. There's no situation that's not unsettling where you're like, where the fuck am I? Um, Unless, again, you explain this all the way as they're drunk, because when I'm drunk and I don't know where I am, it's like, hey, cool. I'm, yeah. um, I'm pretty drunk. I should get another drink. Yeah, um, but that's the thing. Clearly something's amiss, and you can either try to get to the bottom of it, or you can get blasted. <laughs> um, Maybe another Jim Beam will help me. Yeah, 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 Bartender. See clearly here. <laughs> Uh, John's thoughts raced, his mind consumed with fear and dread. The bar had become a prison, the town an eternal purgatory from which there was no escape. The night wore on and the storm continued to rage outside. Unlike his fellow patrons, John refused to give up, so he immediately grabbed his coat and rushed outside. After what felt like hours, he found himself back at the beginning. Drenched from the rain, he walked into the bar, seeking shelter from the storm. He glanced around, unable to shake the feeling that he'd been here before. As he sat down, the bartender greeted him with a smile, handing him a drink. And as he stared at the glass, he realized with horror that he didn't remember how he ended up in this bar. Chapter 3, Drowning Sorrows. There we go. This is the chapter Hmm. I've been waiting for. (laughs) I know, I thought we were getting there with another round and another. Um, After a couple of hours, John once again started remembering fragments of his previous visits to the bar. He couldn't accept his fate, a prisoner trapped in a nightmare that never seemed to end. Over the course of countless repetitions, he sought a way out of the perpetual loop, each attempt more desperate than the last. <laughs> Sweet, so he tries, like, flushing himself down the toilet. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is the escape. Oh, great. Now He's... I just have pissy feet. <laughs> the bartender handed him another towel. <laughs> he said, I'm ready. I got all the towels in the world, you don't bud. Put your foot on my counter. <laughs> it's not this one spot he tried to fight the darkness that engulfed the town as if waging a war against the storm would somehow grant him his freedom I'm wondering if he if he's uh, considered like climbing a mast and, and taunting the storm like Lieutenant Dan yeah I I cannot Except picture he's storm. doing it's... that in the toilet he's tried to flush himself down <laughs> And it's just like spraying piss water back on top of him. He's like, I'm right here. Come and but get l- me. Like Lieutenant Dan, he loses his legs in the <laughs> toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I would struggle with believing in God after that. 
<laughs> Forrest Gump literally fishes his torso out from the toilet before he turn it down. I got your piss leg. <laughs> He's Can't die with the, your piss leg. Sitting at the bar drinking his booze. I should have died in there. <laughs> <laughs> I should have died in the toilet. With Just my like leg. my happy. It's like my pappy, and my pappy's happy before me. <laughs> Every single one of his ancestors died <laughs> trying to flush themselves down a toilet. Uh, I think we've got our next Oscar bait movie. <laughs> I'd love the Revolutionary War version of that, trying to just go into like one of those fucking outhouses. And just like, force yourself down that tiny hole. <laughs> Honestly, it wouldn't be that hard. Most of those holes aren't that small. Like... If you really wanted to go down into an outhouse, I, I think it could be achieved. Um, and now I'm thinking of our old friend of the old show, Derek, with his stories of two separate times falling into septic pits. So if you're out there some, somehow Hi, still listening to us, Derek, yeah, if you got out thinking, of the third we're, one, uh, <laughs> we're, hope we're you're thinking doing he's all right. like, he's listening to us from it. <laughs> <laughs> You fucking keep, assholes. Keep treading turns, buddy. We we miss you. <laughs> Don't give up. He searched for hidden doors and secret passages, believing that the key to his salvation was hidden somewhere in the bar itself. He attempted to rally the other patrons to his cause, organizing collective efforts to break free from the cycle. And I'm very curious to know what that <laughs> looks like. And come on, guys! Let's organize and... Look for secret passages. Yeah, I mean, it just doesn't seem like a job that requires that that much manpower. But yeah. you know, never, nobody, nobody's really doing anything. However, despite their best intentions, they always found themselves back at square one with no memory of the previous attempts. Well, and if you had no memory of the previous attempts, maybe they're attempting the same one thing over <laughs> and over again. <laughs> Each cycle chipped away at John's spirit, gnawing at his sanity. Eventually, his determination began to wane. As hopelessness crept in, the once vibrant spark of, spark of defiance began to flicker and fade. The day came when John simply couldn't continue the struggle. He accepted his place at the table in the bar, now a shell of a man he once was. As his weary eyes stared into the depths of his drink, searching for answers that he knew would never come, a bitter sense of resignation settled in. Around him, the other patrons were lost in their private purgatories. But again, it doesn't have to be private. You're all <laughs> in the yeah. same room. I guess. Their eyes reflecting in the same hopelessness that now consumed John. They had all succumbed to their fate, existing in a world of darkness and despair. As the rain continued to pour outside and the thunder roared, John finally acknowledged the truth. There was no escape, no resolution, only an endless cycle of misery. Epilogue. Another forlorn guest. Amid the storm's relentless downpour, the door to the bar creaked open once more, and a woman stepped inside, her clothes drenched from the rain. John's vacant gear met... Gear. Vacant gear. gaze. Gear. <laughs> John's vacant gaze met her eyes as she hesitated, seeking refuge from the deluge outside. He lifted his drink to his lips, and as he took a slow sip, a tear rolled down his cheek. This is Bud Light. I ordered Miller. No. <laughs> he understood all too well the fate that awaited her in this forlorn place, and his heart ached with sympathy for his newest prisoner of the bar. Or for the newest. She grabbed her drink and took a seat two tables away. John remained at his table, a silent witness to the torment of countless souls doomed to forever seek shelter from the storm in the cold embrace of the bar. The end. I have like what guy came in and he was just like, like me, just like stoked. It's like, hey, awesome. Get out of that fucking rain, huh, guys? Where the door, door swings open and they just see somebody stroll by with an umbrella and they're like, fuck, I didn't <laughs> think of an umbrella. <laughs> or just, I uh, consider that. Or just get wet. That's what yeah. I do usually. <laughs> I don't know. I never used an umbrella. I don't generally know. Because I'm like a man's water. man, an all or nothing sort of chap. I'm a pretty, I'm a, I'm a dapper gent. So now I will wear like a, a cap, like not a baseball hat, a little, like a cap. 
I will I'll keep my head dry. A penny for a theme. And, uh, <laughs> whether it's fucking rain or shine. <laughs> I want, yeah. There's got to be somebody out there who's like online, like bio is hardcore penny farther. Extreme penny farthing. <laughs> extreme penny. I guarantee that's. I'm a thing. Johnny Knoxville, wow. and this is extreme. In fact, they did that bit. Yeah. I, I don't think they because there's it penny n- thing, but they rode those bikes and like fucking wrecked them in a grocery okay. store parking lot. If you ride those bikes, especially if you're already doing a comedy bit and you don't use the term penny farthing, that's a failure because that's yeah. the best fucking part of those bikes. This is PMX. And there's like a part of me, even though I know it's not true, because we did a story on the world nav- circumnavigating penny fur- farther. Well, he didn't do it on a penny farthing bike, but that's how he started. Um, I couldn't tell you his name because I don't retain any of the stuff. Yeah. It was my topic. But... Hans Penny Farth. <laughs> I still choose to believe they're called that because you used to be able to buy them for a penny. Um that is not the case. I remember in the story that he yeah. used like six months he, savings he to buy one. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. But, uh, which is even funnier to me. Yeah. But, I mean, we, we it's just fucking stuff. ridiculous. Like I said, I got a new bike recently. And even that, it, like, it's been a long time since I owned a bike for myself. And getting up on it, it was like, wow, these are big wheels. Imagine those. Like, the fuckers are like the size of some houses. Yeah. 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 That's the thing. Cause even on, cause my bike is relatively new. I bought it when we moved thinking I'd use it a bunch and I barely ever use it. Um, but I bought, cause I am not a tall individual. So like I bought the smaller like frame Yeah. and the, the wheels are like, it's not, it, it's like the smallest adult size bike <laughs> that they come. Sure. And and I know it's how they're supposed to fit because I've I've you know read it. On, you're not really. I think some of us, or a lot of the times, we think about like when we were kids and like you can stand basically straight up and down on the bike with your feet flat on the ground. You shouldn't fit that way. That's not really how they're designed to fit. Yeah. But that's how I feel comfortable with it because that's where you're like most secure. Um. And that's kind of one of the reasons I don't ride more is because I need I need to get to practice in. But it's like I'm just very awkward on it now. Um. I can't imagine. A bike like that. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like... Like, I I I get that they started off with, like, a step ladder, but, like, how the fuck do you stop? Like, there is no way to stop without being time to crash. Yeah. I sure hope that this drop doesn't hurt a lot. Um, (laughs) But I I honestly believe that's one of those things that, like, somebody was dicking around and just, like, drew one and was like, one day everybody will ride one of these. And, like, his idiot rich friend was like, I would love to ride around on one of those. That's the thing. It had to be a pretty, it was basically the Elon Musk of Penny Farthing Air. Like, oh. it's the Cybertruck of bicycles. Yeah, there's going to be a, there, to give it a year, we'll, we'll have Cyber Farthing. <laughs> like, the evolution of bike riding in his mind. And it's just going to be I'm made picturing... out of fucking razor blades. <laughs> razor blades can't get stolen because it'll cut their hands off uh, anti-security <laughs> anti-theft security system where you coincidentally you'll chop your dick off if you ride it although I'm also picturing him coming out with the next cyber truck that has the penny further front wheels with the small like, like bigger than car size front wheels but smaller than car size back wheels yeah. <laughs> and it drives like, itself ah. very poorly yeah. <laughs> Some and it also the computer is drawn to bodies of water, and it also can't stop without flopping over on its side, just yeah. like a real thing. <laughs> like, yeah. Just, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yes, I love that term. It's one of my favorite words that I always forget about because how often, <laughs> frankly, it doesn't yeah. come up. And you should get like day to day life farthing tattooed on your back in like biker font. <laughs> yeah, but no picture of it, just the yeah. word penny farthing. Yeah. And it would w- kind of work because my, my youngest daughter's name is Penelope, but we call her Penny. So people would start to see it and they'd be like, oh, you have your daughter. Wait, farthing? Penny yeah. farthing? What the fuck's that mean? What, is that a nickname for her? You're like, no, it's I one love, of those bikes. I would, love, a- I would love a biker jacket that's like devil farthing. 
and it's like <laughs> you know some demonic skeletons on a penny farthing but yeah. also dressed like in period clothes, like those yeah. big like balloony pants yeah but, yeah, <laughs> like, but it's like it's the that, that's hat. the that's the patch but it's still like a true like biker vest yeah <laughs> which is like it's really funny like they're they're like people and like podcasts and stuff they make like fake biker merchandise and they've like had people write in to be like uh be careful with that because real biker gangs will think you're actually like trying to encroach and it's like or it's really th- funny to me to imagine that in the case of like penny farthing, farthing. it's like yeah I i'm c- gonna run guns on my penny farthing yeah, see, now I'm picturing, I think we do need to design one that's like that, but, like, super serious, like, it's got to be as badass as you can make that look, yeah. but then we need to have a penny farthing game, so there's, like, 12 of us riding around <laughs> on penny farthings. <laughs> yeah. Is that your bike out there? No, mine's the giant fucking cartoon one with the big wheel. <laughs> Just going into biker bars and them begging me to not come back with that stupid clown shit. <laughs> that would be a funny jackass bit. Like, uh, I'm Johnny Everybody's... Knoxville and I'm in a biker gang. And you know how like all bikers have nicknames, but literally all of our nicknames are just Crash. <laughs> like <laughs> <it> Crash. <laughs> yeah, what do you want, Crash? <laughs> uh, I like it. Yeah, yeah that, that does seem awful brave to come up with fake because either, like you said, I, that can get misinterpreted as encroaching, or it can be interpreted as you like mocking so, them, which also does not go over well. So I think like, like where I heard that was uh, the Tell Em Steve Dave podcast, which has been running for a long time, and like they're kind of their home base is like New Jersey, and they rep New Jersey, and they're like you know proud of it and stuff so they were making like these biker vests and it was going to say like new jersey and then either the podcast name or the fan base name i don't remember and somebody wrote in it's like you can probably just make the vest like as is but you gotta take new jersey off that patch because these gangs will fucking kill you if they see you wearing (laughs) like something that you're like claiming new jersey as your turf yeah even if that's not what you mean to do. Yeah, they don't tend to ask a ton of questions. Yeah, it's um, like, uh, good luck explaining to these guys. Like, well, have you heard of a podcast? <laughs> and in fairness, there's a lot of biker gangs of various severity, and a lot of them aren't, you know, completely unreasonable killers. But there are the, the that is a real thing, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like a best case scenario, they'll be like, take the fucking jacket off. Yeah, you and know, eat the more <laughs> more likely they're breaking a pool yeah. cue over your head. Um, yeah. So that's the thing; they'll kill you in a creative way. Usually, like they don't always they they're not like oh we'll just shoot this fucker. They're like we'll beat the shit out of him and then like hang him upside down from a shark hook. Yeah, where yeah. Well, who? Why did we're in fucking Indiana? Who had a shark hook? I don't know. <laughs> But we got one. <laughs> but they're a biker gang. They've got they've got yeah. the tools ready. Yeah, to go. they got they're just like a fucking adult toy box full of fucking horrific like, torture murder shit. Yeah, they're just like that. I, it's just I call it badass Reynolds. killing. Yeah, you know, I was like <laughs> I gotta have my tools. <laughs> so yeah, that's a that's a story, and that's you know a great idea. About a bike gang, you should totally start, start it, listener. Because yeah. I don't have the stick to itiveness. No. All right, uh, we're done, and uh, that's it. Yeah. And don't fucking don't ever tell yeah. me this episode didn't happen. Because <laughs> I am telling you, it happened. <laughs> I love that. That's that's kind of my sense of humor. The random people. Like, <laughs> it's just like going up to somebody at the end of a conversation. You've talked to them all night. It's somebody you met at like a work party and it, you had a decent conversation at the end. It's like, oh, it was nice meeting you. Don't ever fucking offer me a strawberry. <laughs> and like, and for what? the love of fuck, if, that's, if you don't have real chocolate milk, 